Ask any flat earther why they believe in a flat earth and they'll probably say something along the lines of because of the evidence or I studied this stuff for myself, I know the proof. Yeah, some flat earthers might just be stupid, some might just be gullible, some might just be saying they're flat earthers for the attention, but there are also plenty of people out there who genuinely believe the earth is flat, they genuinely believe this stuff, they've read loads on the topic, they've done their own little research and their own little experiments and they really believe this stuff. Despite there being so much evidence against them, despite us literally knowing for a fact that the earth is a globe and there being many, many holes in their theories, they still believe the earth is flat, they still believe they're right. But this video isn't going to be about whether they're right or not. This video isn't going to be about disproving or proving certain theories. Although if you are interested in that stuff, there's some pretty interesting videos linked below made by some really awesome people. But this video is going to be about why there's been such a resurgence in flat earth believers in the last few years. Where's it come from? Why do they believe this stuff? And I don't just want to look at the, well, here are their supposed facts side of things. I want to look at maybe the non-conscious stuff that's going on. Why people believe in conspiracy theories at all, and why people believe in the flat earth one in particular. I figured I'd start by looking into conspiracy theories in general. The general consensus among researchers today is that it's not actually uncommon to believe in conspiracy theories. In fact, an often cited 2014 paper by Oliver and Wood titled Conspiracy Theories and the Paranoid Styles of Mass Opinion actually found that half of all Americans believe in at least one conspiracy theory. That's a lot of people. And further to this, other research suggests that if you already believe in one conspiracy theory, you're more likely to believe in several of them. While it might be easy to shout out claims that these people are delusional, these people must be suffering from some kind of mental illness or mental disorder, or you could just say they're just plain ignorant, they're stupid, they don't know this stuff, a lot of the research shows that that's actually really unlikely. The Oliver and Wood paper I mentioned from 2014, in that, they found that the tendency to believe in conspiracy theories does not seem to correlate with political ignorance, while Dr. Joel Gold, an associate professor of psychiatry at New York University School of Medicine, argues that while one of the definitions of delusion is that despite the fact there's evidence to the contrary, people still believe it, he also goes on to claim that if enough people believe something, if a community believes it, then it's not really defined as a delusion at all. So that means that a lot of the big conspiracy theories can't technically be defined as delusions. So if it's not delusion, if it's not illness, if it's not ignorance, what makes people believe in conspiracy theories? Well, a fairly widely accepted theory is that it's all about trying to regain control of your life. Swami, a professor of social psychology at Anglia Ruskin University here in the UK, said that people who lack agency or lack power in some way are much more likely to accept a conspiracy theory because it gives them a sense of agency. And this theory is backed up by a number of other studies as well. One particular carried out in the Netherlands, um, as well as this study by these two guys here, whose name I'm not even gonna try and pronounce because I'm stupid. We'll call them Joseph and Joseph. Joseph and Joseph are political scientists from the University of Miami, and they wrote a book titled American Conspiracy Theories. Can you guess what it's about? <laughs> in this book, they wrote about an experiment carried out in a lab where subjects were made to feel anxious and out of control. Following this, they found that people were far more likely to latch onto the idea that big conspiratorial forces were acting on their lives, that they were behind terrible events. Going back to Dr. Gold for a minute, his theory on this matter is to suggest that there are two certain parts of the brains working when someone believes in a conspiracy theory. He claims that in the brain there are what he calls the suspicion system and the reflective system. The suspicion system in the brain gets triggered by some kind of an event, and this system is really, really essential for us survival, or at least it has been in the past. For example, you're in a quiet room at night and you suddenly hear a noise outside. Then your suspicion system gets triggered. It puts you on alert. Or in the case of conspiracies, this could be some kind of big event happening. It could be JFK getting shot. It could be 9-11. It's just something that makes you panic. It makes you worried. It makes you anxious. It raises your suspicions. He goes on to argue that then the reflective system kicks in. It's what oversees the suspicion system. He try it tries to make sense of the triggers and figure out what they actually are. It stops us panicking too much. In regards to a noise outside your building, you might be like, oh wait, 
it's the neighbor's cat. But Dr. Gold goes on to argue that when the suspicion system overtakes the reflective system, or they become disconnected in some fashion, that fear becomes the reality. And it's when there's this disconnect that can lead to some people believing in conspiracy theories. That the fear, the anxiety, it, it's heightened and you stop thinking logically, you just jump to conclusions. You might think, well, clearly 9-11 was an inside job, because you're not really looking at all the evidence. You're just full of fear and you're like, damn it, this makes sense. So to summarise, consensus between these studies seems to be that when people are feeling a lack of control in their lives, they're more likely to believe in conspiracy theories. This might be because of a tendency to recognise patterns where the data is actually chaotic, or it might be because in those anxious times, the reflective part of our brain isn't working properly. Or maybe it's both. But what about putting this into the context of flat earthers? Well, that's where it gets a little bit more complicated. <laughs> Despite the whole flat earth thing technically being a conspiracy theory, it's not really like the others in terms of the way people behave about it and why people believe in it. It just overcomplicates things, basically. Professor Swami notes that people are more likely to be flat earthers if they already believe in other conspiracy theories. He says this is because they already have this worldview where there are people out there trying to get them or trying to trick them or trying to manipulate the public. To them, it's just another step in that worldview to consider that, you know, NASA or whoever is lying to them and the world is actually flat. So in this regard, flat earthers, you know, and the flat earth conspiracy, it fits with what we've observed about other conspiracy theories. However, where flat earth theory deviates from the others is that there isn't really a trigger, if that makes sense. So remember Dr. Gold's theory about the suspicion system in the brain, right? That doesn't really fit here because what's the trigger for flat earthers? With JFK conspiracies, the trigger that made everyone suspicious was that he got shot. With 9-11, it was the planes hitting the Twin Towers. With a lot of kind of alien conspiracies, it might be seeing something in the sky. But with Flat Earth, can you really call just looking at the horizon or reading a BOV tweet a trigger? It's just not quite on the same level, is it? And that's why it doesn't really fit in there. What, I mean, there's gotta be a trigger, right? What makes people suddenly start believing in a flat earth? Similarly, there's not really any anxiety or worry associated with being a flat earther. With 9-11 conspiracies, you could argue that people are trying to make sense of something terrifying that happened where their lives were at risk. However, with Flat Earth, what really is there to be scared of if there's a globe Earth? People aren't really trying to claim that the world is flat to make sense of something scary. They're just claiming it's flat. Another important concept to talk about that Eric Oliver notes is that while there's a trend between people who already believe in another conspiracy theory also believing in a Flat Earth, the trend really doesn't go the other way. He says that what makes Flat Earth is different from other conspiracy theorists is that they don't often show magical thinking, like believing in aliens or the supernatural. So if people aren't turned to this conspiracy theory because... So if people aren't turned to this conspiracy theory out of fear or anxiety or because they believe in the supernatural, then why are they turning to it? Why are they becoming Flat Earthers? Well, I found one particular article that kind of really changed my mind on things and I started to kind of like come up with a little answer of my own in my head. This article looked at the tweets of a certain flat earth believing rapper. But what made this article stand out from the others is that they weren't mocking him for it. Instead, they described his tweets as touchingly genuine with some deep-seated desire to work through confusion and towards truth. The article goes on to talk about B.O.B. saying, This isn't a man who never learned science or who has some fundamental objection to examining empirical evidence about the world. This is a man who has looked at the world around him and decided that mainstream science isn't doing a good job at explaining what he sees. So, he's collecting evidence, seeking out literature by well-versed experts, working out a better theory on his own. So, could this be true? <laughs> B.O.B.'s conclusions might not be correct, but maybe he is just a man trying to figure out the world for himself. A very, very complicated world at that. And he's doing it in the only way he knows how. He's not scared, he's not worried, he's not anxious. He's just curious. This particular article introduced me to the concept of outsider physicists, a term I'd not heard before. The theory is that because physics in general has gotten much more theoretical and abstract over the last 150 years or so, 
it's more complicated. It's not quite as easy for people to understand. And apparently the theory is this generates feelings of anxiety and a general feeling of unease and unsettlement in some people. That kind of got me thinking, well, is this basically the trigger for flat earthers? This feeling of unease about abstract physics. Bear with me, bear with me, this does make sense. So Lizzie Wade, in her article titled In Defense of Flat Earthers, she speculates what could be going on in the head of flat earthers by writing. Physics is supposed to be about understanding the world I live in, but I don't see any time dilation, entanglement, quarks, curvature of the earth when I look around me. Why should I trust this math I can't understand over what I see with my own eyes? She and others argue that this leads towards people becoming outside of physicists. People who apparently insist on figuring everything out for themselves in a way that they can understand. Physicist and author Margaret Wertheim wrote in her 2011 book Physics on the Fringe that outsider physicists like this are driven by the idea that their own experience must be the starting point for understanding the world. And, and this kind of idea of flat earthers being like this is backed up by some flat earthers themselves. Michael Wilmore is vice president of the Flat Earth Society and he was quoted in one particular article saying, my own convictions are a result of philosophical introspection and a considerable body of data that I have personally observed and which I'm still compiling. So it seems that this is basically what flat earthers are, even if they don't label themselves as outsider physicists. And this need to try and see things and understand them from the, for themselves and follow their own methods, it leads them often to follow in this alternate scientific technique known as, if I can pronounce this right, the zetetic, the, the zetetic method. Z -z 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 this one. Why are words so hard to say? So this was a method developed in the 19th century by a natural flat earther at the time. It revolves around the principle that, to put it very simply, sensory observations reign supreme. This means that in the context of a flat earth, if the earth looks flat to them, it must be flat. And that's way more important than any abstract maths or photos that other people have taken from space. So again, to summarize here, people just wanna understand the world, they're curious. And as a part of this, they might struggle to kind of understand some of the abstract concepts associated with a lot of physics today. They want to be able to see what's happening and they want to be able to see and understand the world for themselves in their own way. When they can't do that, if they don't understand something, if they can't see the actual proof of it, it makes them anxious. And they look for answers by using different techniques, by doing different things, by looking for things in their own way in conspiracy theories like the Flat Earth. So what I learned from research in this video was a little bit surprising to me. Not to sound rude, but it was. It doesn't seem like these are irrational people. They don't seem crazy or delusional. They're just curious and they want to learn. That said, as curious and as willing to learn as flat earthers are, getting them to come round to actually understanding that the actual real life earth that we are on right now is a globe is harder than it sounds. A decent amount of research shows that even if you present flat earthers and just conspiracy theorists in general with lots and lots of information, they tend to be pretty stubborn, thanks to confirmation bias. That said, I do have to wonder, like, do we really need to change their minds? And the logical, rational part of me in my brain says, yes, of course we do, otherwise they're just going around believing things that are objectively wrong. They're spreading objectively wrong information. They shouldn't do that. That's, that's what the rational part of my brain says. But then the other part of my brain kind of says, well, maybe the flat earth conspiracy theory is kind of the lesser of many evils. I mean, when you consider the amount of people who do believe in at least one conspiracy theory, if they have to believe in any, part of me would kind of rather it was the flat earth one. Because I don't think there have been too many documented cases of people getting hurt from believing in a flat earth. Uh, there's not really been much talk of it stopping other scientific research, not much talk of it getting too involved in like politics and policy making. Yeah, I kind of feel like compared to like anti-vaxxers or compared to uh, climate change deniers, flat earths really aren't that bad and they're not doing that much harm. So I'm in two minds about this, I'm not really sure what I think, but that's where I want to hand this over to you. Why do you think some people believe in a flat earth? Do you believe in the flat earth? If so, why? Let me know down in the comments. Also, 
in regards to flat earthers, do you think we need to work to change their mind? Do you think we just need to kind of let them be and hope people move on from it soon? Or do you think we need to actively take a role in minimising the number of flat earthers out there? I don't know, let me know your thoughts down in the comments because I'd really really love to hear them. But for now, thank you so much for watching this video, I really really do appreciate it. Also quick note that I hit 10,000 subscribers this week and if you've been following me on Twitter you'll know that I got very very excited about it and drank a lot of wine with Danny. It was his fault, he bought my favourite wine, we had to celebrate. But just a huge huge thank you to all of you out there who continue to support my channel and are just generally amazing and wonderful and you engage with me on all my videos and you comment and you send me links on Twitter and you follow me on Instagram and all the other wonderful stuff and just a huge huge thank you to all of you for being amazing. I really really cannot tell you how much I appreciate it and how great I think you all are. So I just want to find this with a little bit of a thank you or rather a huge huge thank you to you all and just say that um, I'm hopefully going to be doing something cool as a kind of celebration-y type video soon. It's just going to take a little bit of planning. But for now, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you again soon. A huge thank you to everyone supporting me on Patreon this month, including Secular Reason, Lucky Scott, Jaden Shepard, Jared Moore, Sir Michael Moore and Matthew Minamore. Plus everyone else who's mentioned on the end screen here and down in the description below. Like, I cannot thank you all enough, you're all incredible.